Hey guys, welcome into the Poker Reborn channel. We are checking out Battle Brothers Blazing Deserts DLC's new update here, the dev vlog update, 131 City States Part 2. We were, of course, we're waiting for that, and here it is today. I just want to say real quick before I jump in, if you're looking for my thoughts and opinions, that'll all be at the end of the video. If you check the link below, it'll tell you uh, in the description where you can find that, just, you know, the timestamp essentially. So without further ado, let's get into this, get the first part out of the way, and uh, yeah, see what's going on in this dev blog here. We've previously covered a good chunk of what the southern city-states are about. Now it's time to take a look at some of their troops that you may end up facing in the battlefield. Charge! Anyways, <laughs> now slaves. Oh boy, here we go. Whether born into slavery, made into slave as punishment by law, or taken on a raid into foreign territory, and sold into the highest bidder as a, in the slave auction, it's on the back of slaves that these, that like these, that much of the economy of the city-state is built. But slaves are not cheap, just cheap labor in peacetime, they're also used as expendable troops in war. That makes sense. Uh, in fact... <laughs> That's how, uh, that's how a lot of that stuff historically is done anyways. Beautiful picture here, of course. We'll get into that at the very end. Life is cheap in the South, as the saying goes, and nothing makes this harsh reality sink in better than how the city-states treat their slaves. In battle, they're usually sent first against the enemy to tire them out their lines before the real battle begins. They're poorly armed, and many just w carrying tools and imp as improvised weapons and rely on swarming, flanking, and overwhelming the enemy. They have poor morale and flee easily, but killing or breaking them does not affect the morale of any city-state troops that aren't slaves themselves. I want you to just remember that piece right there. This piece right here. It's very, very important. In fact, the city-state troops have no qualms about friendly fire when it comes to slaves, and they may seize the opportunity that slaves provide locking down the enemy and firing the ranged weapons into the thick of battle. Woo, woo, woo. Now that is a strategy. That is going to be interesting. That actually reminds me of, uh, um, I think it was Vietnam. Well, I'll talk about that later, but okay. Now the conscripts. Citizens of the great city-states enjoy privileges that neither slaves nor outsiders do. For example, they can have the opportunity to conduct business with legal certainty of the codified law and can even hire legal counsel. In turn, they also have certain obligations to their state. Having paid taxes is, such one, is one such obligation. But another one for every adult male citizen is either mandatory military service or by paying a hefty sum to the state's coffers to be exempt. Ooh, all right, the Council of Viziers may decide to conscript the citizens for defense of the city-state or for otherwise protecting and furthering the interests of the state. In practice, this can mean anything between border skirmishes with other states, doom punitive expeditions deep into the deserts uh, to hunt down raiders, and crushing slave rebellions. Hmm. This is just beautiful. <laughs> I am loving that. That looks awesome. Okay. Conscripts make up the bulk of the military force in the city-states. They have received some military drill and are most often dressed in distinct southern ar armor made of several layers of linen, called a linothorax. thorax, I think you say it, that is relatively cheap to produce. If they don't have access to the helms, helmets, they choose to, wear, to wrap cloth around their heads to protect against the sun. The color and patterns of these head wraps are often linked to a particular region of the South, and one familiar would know what, southern, what place in the South conscripts call home by their headwear alone. Just before battle lines clash, conscripts employ, ooh, employ a unique weapon of the city-states. It's one reason why they are the military power to be reckoned with, and you'll learn about that next week in detail. <laughs> oh, that's exciting. That is very, very exciting. Officers of the city-states are mostly uh, made up of wealthy who can, or who would have enough funds to buy themselves free of conscription, but seek a career commanding troops in the military by their own volition. A victorious commander 
will occur influence and gravitas and some officers may consider army but a stepping stone to fledging political careers careers <laughs> but uh yeah this is interesting right here that is interesting we did not see that oh don't want to get too far holy cow that's cool Rare. anyways <laughs> um considerably better uh, armed than conscripts, officers carry finely crafted mail and Lamar armor with intricate southern ornaments into battle. Naturally, all armors can be bought, looted, or, or and worn by your own men in the game. That? <laughs> oh, man. I, I have a gold. Uh, I don't have a gold tooth. I won't say gold tooth. Kind of like a ranch tooth. I love gold, so that's going to be awesome. Now for the assassins. Members of a secretive ritualistic cult... Assassins deal in the death, deal in death, and provide murder as a service. They have no political ambition beyond the continued survival of the cult and that of their warped philosophy, and so act only in the service of other parties, like individual city-states. They're not encountered roaming on the world map, but exclusively as part of contracts and events. There's something special about these. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be beautiful. In battle, assassins wear traditionally black robes over their finely crafted mail. Many also choose to exchange their own face for that of their master and founder of the cult, the Man on the Mountain, which is really interesting. By wearing metal face masks, assassins have a nimble combat style and employ a variety of alchemical contraptions like flash pots and smoke pots to daze their opponents and move freely between them, only then to use a quadal dagger for great impact on their debilita debilitated victims. Yeah, that is um, that is some wild information, guys. So let's swing back up to the top. I'm gonna finish this video out. We'll kind of go over my thoughts and opinions. Uh, so much to kind of go through. So there was a few things about the slaves that make it really interesting. The number one thing that I thought was interesting, I think I, I'm pretty sure I highlighted it through here, but essentially as they're talking about slaves they they say that some of them are born in slavery okay right here pretty much the beginning tells you a story born into slavery made into slaves by punishment of law taken on a raid uh let's see your highest bidder back to slaves let's see down here where does it say i should have probably i wish i could highlight it or something but Either way, what it did originally, what this does tell us originally, somewhere in the in the text below, is that slaves are not just simply slaves, okay? That's a huge part of this. We need to understand that you could get a slave, just based on what the text is saying, you could get a slave that was just punished by law. Imagine when you're, you know, obviously the price is going to change. We have to bid. There's going to be something about a bidding system for a slave which to me is it could be let's just say the highest chances like a, a hedge knight a, you know a gladiator technically could be a slave you have uh, maybe a I mean you could you could be paying for a slave that was originally a tailor you just don't know so just remember that I think the big part of the slave aspect is yes they don't have a lot of morale and it sounds like they're weak there's certain things to them um, I wish I could find it on here. I should just harsh reality. Uh, killing them makes no moral effects. So, but yeah, you, you're gonna get a variety of different types of slaves, and there's got to be slaves like if there was a hedge knight, and you were to pay two thousand for this hedge knight, you could have all the hedge knight stats except for two things. One, fatigue might be one issue, may not be. I don't know, but. The big one it says is the resolve. They're gonna have low resolve in the first place. So, something to be aware of. There might be a little bit of a catch here. You get three stars and resolve, and hey, you know it's not gonna be a problem. Or you can just use uh, the, you can use the perk. Um, geez, I'm losing my mind here. I can't think of what it is. But the point is, is that there's going to be a variety of slaves. But at the very end, it says here, may they may seize the opportunity. This is of course the conscripts and the what are these guys the officers may seize the opportunity that slaves provide by locking down the enemy and firing their ranged weapons into the thick of battle now 
We don't know what those ranged weapons are, but clearly they have a new ranged weapon. Do they have a, do they have a catapult? Do they have a... Uh, I don't know. I don't want to say cannon, but what other thing could they have? They could have like a... Uh, one of those long spears. I can't think of what the... Maybe it is kind of a catapult. Um, ballistics. Like a ballistic. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name. I can't think of it. Either way, there's going to be a ranged weapon that sets them apart. And that gets reiterated a few times. Now, if we go to conscripts, for conscripts, these guys are all people that were essentially... Oh, and these guys don't have any different weapons, by the way. It's all, like, they said tools, just random things. It's all crap weapons. Kind of your first tier. It is your first tier. Now, you get into, like, the second tier. These are all civilians. Some of them are troops. Some of them are trained. But for the most part, they are all civilians that have to defend their city-state or are called upon to go on somewhere in the in the deep desert to take on raiders or slave rebellions and so on so everybody has to go into the war unless they have a lot of money and they can pay off the viziers the councils so that's going to be interesting of course their their armor is very very cool i mean the light armor itself i love how unique this looks and it does say that their their turbans are going to be different colors to decide what this you know where they're from and so on but to glean from this, essentially, these guys, I don't think, are going to be insanely strong. I think they're going to have their abilities, but they are just citizens at the end of the day. And for the most part, they are citizens. Some people who put themselves in, but I don't know how they're going to uh, like mess around with the stats. One thing I also noticed looking at this picture is, you know, last week... I talked about the shields. I talked about how their shields were way more maneuverable. Um, and they were smaller. They're kind of like a, like the buckler, a little bit bigger than the buckler, and they used it good for range defense and so on. I'm going to stick to my guns on this and say that these are going to probably be the same as, um, as like your normal shields. But instead of 15-15, it's going, or is that right? 15-15. I think that's right. Instead of 15-15, I think it's going to be 13-17. That's my guess. I don't have anything to say that, but I, I still believe that these are going to be better for blocking arrows. Why? Because the strategy is already being placed out. They're going to throw their slaves at us, right? Which means that we're going to use our arrows. Probably, I'm just imagining, I'm going to use, I know this is my strategy, just already thought up. To use your arrows to, to, to kill these guys before they can bog you down. And... What they're thinking is they I'm guaranteeing that they want you to come after them, especially with their whatever it is that they have a ballistic or they have a new uh, I don't know what type of weapon it's going to be, but whatever they have, I want I'm sure that they're gonna do a shield wall and say you have to come at us. That's why they have these dazing devices and that's why they're doing the overhead sweep. Why else? These are a crashing type of unit. They want you to come at them. No more waiting for we have more archers than you so you have to come after us unless you steal their equipment where you can just take out one take out another and so on it's i just i imagine the south is going to be a bigger pain in the butt and it's probably going to take a little while to get right but for the most part i see it as an opportunity for us to have a greater um archer class being that they're going to have new weapons in the back but also the shielding as well we all know the number one threat, uh, mid-game especially, mid-game especially, is archers. We all know when we see a, a marksman, we're like, okay, this sucks, like, crap, you need to have more archers than them, or better archers than them for them to come after us. And that's kind of the concept I can see here, is trying to negate some of that strategy. On the flip side, we do have the archers. Now, mind you, this is a smaller shield. It's a different type of shield. These were the shields that we saw last time. So this, I could see being more of a melee type of shield, kind of the counterpart. Maybe it's going to be uh, 17, 13, but they have so much shield, they have so much armor as we can already see. Like this is going to be a, essentially your hedge knight is my thought. So just something to look at with that. Of course, we do have our sword here. Now, we did go over the Shamshir, we went over the Scimitar, and we went over the newest one, I, the Scythe. So here's what we need to know here. This, to me, is going to be the two-handed of those weapons. So if you get hit by this thing, you're going to have more damage. It, it's probably not going to be a lot for uh, ignoring armor. 
But if it hits your health points, you are going to be in a lot of trouble because it'll knock your health points down. And then also there's the bleeding effect. I guarantee this is going to have a bleeding effect. I'm not I can't guarantee that actually. I'm going to say 90% sure that that's going to be 10%. I'd be shocked because it really does have the same type of curvature and they don't have a two-hander of that type of weapon where everything else in the game has that. So stay tuned for that. I'd be willing to bet this. I'm going to put my money where my mouth is on that one. Uh, but yeah, these guys are just, they're just rich. They're wealthy people who want to fight, want to have glory. They want, they're probably going to sit in the back and then come in. They're probably not going to be like your, your, um, the, the captains or whatever, the leaders where they come at you first. I bet you they're going to be the last line of defense. So to get their armor may be a little bit more tricky, but if you do get in on them, they're going to, they can cause a lot of damage. Now, this is probably the most interesting piece of the puzzle. And it was the, they're, they're assassins, they're in a ritualist, or er, ritualist cult. Remember that. This is the interesting part. It's ritualistic. So they have rituals. Rituals of summoning what? Or what does that exactly mean? There might be more to this. There might be a higher power of these guys that we just don't know about. In fact, here's my, here's my thought. There's going to be a boss. Because they're only contracts and events. So... I bet you there's some sort of mini boss that will be like the man on the mountain or somebody who's a, tr a leader because they switch their faces out. They're not like cutting their faces off or anything like that and then throwing this metal on their face. No, this is what their, their cult looks like. Okay, this is the face of, let's see, of the man, old man on the mountain. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works. The strategy of them coming at you is very cool. They use their flash pots, they use their... Uh, what was the other one? It wasn't a melting pot. The, okay, flash and smoke pot to move in and attack people. So if you have an opening through your line and they, they'll they utilize that to get to you. Do you are you going to face a bunch of them? I don't know that you will, but if you did, that would be kind of rough. But remember, you can build characters like they have. So it might be interesting to use their own strategy against them since the smoke works both ways is my understanding. Uh, unless you get hit by the initial charge of it. Uh, besides that, I'm very cute. Or cutest. I'm very cute. No, I'm very curious about the Quadal Dagger. Um, I still don't. I still want to see what the actual damage is. I hope they do a video before the game is actually released. And I imagine in the, in the coming weeks we're going to actually get a release date after probably the next of the weapon pack. So that's, that's about it, guys. We'll have to see what happens. It's very exciting news, of course. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll have to go from there. But if you guys did like the video, please hit the like. Uh, subscribe for more content just like this. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.